All right, everyone. So if you want to know what a good pullback looks like, uh, we kind of are getting at the past two days. So the past two days, the NASDAQ has pulled back under 1%, so that's good overall. But the more important item is volume. Volume has not picked up significantly on the pullback. And I know before, it's normally pulled back on heavier volume and we still move higher. So even if it was heavier volume, it would be nothing to panic over. But the lower below average volume overall is definitely a positive. Don't want to look too much into it. We're still above the 50-day moving average. And there are a lot of bearish um, trend followers right now. So there's people that are long this uptrend. And they're nervous as can be adding hedges at every little down tick, which is fair. I mean, they're probably, they probably very well could be right short term. But I can't do that. Because despite the market pulling back for the past two days, we are still getting a ton of long signals. And if there's no capital available to put into hedges, to hedge against the long positions because new long positions come out, then that means that the market's going to more than likely want to break out to the upside. And I got to respect that. So the NASDAQ with its good um, pullback today and the NASDAQ 100 with its decent pullback today, only down 0.76% the last two sessions. Look at the Russell 2000. It's down less than 1% in the past two sessions. So overall, it's a good pullback. And the weak area continues to be the S&P 500, New York Stock Exchange, and Dow Jones Industrial Average. Well, why they don't look bad, they don't look good either. That's why the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is under a neutral condition with the NYSE. And the S&P 500 is trying its damnedest to go back to a neutral condition, but it does remain under a buy signal. The important levels to me are going to be this 616 or 615 and 69 lows. So we got to hold that level. And then if we get below the 200-day moving average, sell signals come about. And the only concern still remains the Dow Jones transportation average still looks like shit. I would like for this stock, to, this index to start moving higher overall. But we'll see who wins. Um, for right now, it's a healthy overall pullback. And like I said, I don't have a whole lot of individual stocks telling me that, yeah, we, ha we do have a top. Besides this Dow Jones transportation average, I'm having a really hard time finding concrete price-based bearish reasons to be in this market, including today's pullback. So today's pullback, only two stocks triggered sell signals today. PCOM was a sell on an end-of-day basis in the morning. My final sell stop was below this low, but with it failing the 50-day moving average, that was it for me. I saw a gapping up to 12.27 after hours yesterday, and I was excited because that means I would get out at totally at break-even because 12.27, where is it at? Am I wrong? 1227. Get back here. There you go. It's because 1227 is where my entry was. So if I can get out of this, it was once a winner, now a loser, break even. I was going to be totally, totally stoked. Unfortunately, that gap up didn't hold and it opened at 1215. Still good. But even if I would have used the low day, 1210 would have been knocked out as it trade down to 1203. So PCOM was a sell at the market at open. By the way, that's a speculative stock, not high quality. First, end of day sell signal I have actually needed to take in forever forever weeks two weeks one and a half weeks I don't know how long it's been but it's been forever and that's another sign of a very 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 strong market so PCOM became my first market sell in forever and then the only other sell signal to trigger today AMWD and once again as soon as it hit my final sell stop level it rallied back so my final sell stop level on this position was 54.89 you can see it hit 54.85 today, taking me out of all of it. Now, at the, by the end of the day, this was our signal date here. You close below 55.84, you're out of half of it. Not only are you closing below 55.84, you're also closing below the 20-day moving average. So no matter what, it's a 50% sell. But unfortunately, intraday, I was taken out of all of it. But besides AMWD, no other sell signals, nothing even close. And the worst holding I had, INSY, is still above its 20-day moving average. Final sell stop gets moved up now to the low a day of this day, and or you can split it up between this low a day here and maybe this support level here, which is what I might do since we're long from back here and we have gains, and that way I can make out on half the position with gains and then give the other half a chance. And if I am wrong, I leave flat. No big deal. There's enough stocks working right now that I don't care. But besides INSY, ANAC, and then EGRX, which were the other three bad ones, uh, hard to be too upset about what you saw today. And then even more surprising, trust me, guys, I don't want to see this. I would rather us be in an uptrend, us fully long, and not receive any new long signals, actually, because, you know, it'd be nice just to sit back and kick it. But if you're not fully invested, boy, as you can tell the past week, 
I continue to receive new long signals that continue to work. MITK is the only new long signal that hasn't worked, and as you can now see, it has come back. And now it wants to hit my buy stop, but unfortunately in the cash account, the buy stop has to be removed. It can only stay in the margin account. Why? Because I have three new long signals and three ad signals, which is going to easily take up the remaining capital. MNST is a can slim quality stock, perfect speculator scan stock. Not the greatest signal, but you know what? 50-day moving average bounces on breakouts above um, strong resistance levels and perfect speculator stocks normally work if it doesn't. First final first sell stop you can make below the 132.03 level, and then you can have your final one with a move below 128.27, or you could use it all below today's low a day. But MNST, cancel him, perfect speculator, 5%. It was in what my high price my high price stock scan, but that besides that that was it. So MNST, if you're not already fully invested, five percent position, two and a half can slim, two and a half perfect speculator, zero percent for being confirmed in that scan, just because, eh, we're under a mixed bag of goodies. We don't have a buy signal across the board. We have one index under a sell signal, the Dow Jones Transportation Average. What do you want? And then two new long signals also. Higher quality because they're both canceling quality, but obviously you can tell by just looking at NGHC, we're not dealing with, you know, the most, you know, <laughs> I guess you could say intraday liquid stock because it does average 100,000 shares a day, but intraday it just isn't a liquid trader. But if you go back to a Zoom 2 and see it off the May lows, you can see it's already been under a big uptrend. And now as it steadily and slowly builds out a long-term ascending base pattern, it looks like it's ready to break out as BOP has raced back to the max screen BOP level. Huge volume surge and another pocket pivot point buy signal. This has been a flurry since late May. And at one point today, the stock was only up about 1.25, 1.50%. Very early on, it showed up in the scans. I was telling everybody this is definitely a long signal by the end of the day. I hope it doesn't run up too much more. Uh, and it did, which gives me even further confirmation that this is a good stock. So can some quality stock. It was confirmed in the new 52-week highs on, a, on at least average volume scan. And it was in my price volume BOP surge scan with price volume and BOP obviously surging. However, only 2.5% thanks to the mixed bag of goodies. And then tonight, another new long position, TRR, hits above $10 a share. So I'm giving it to everyone in the gold um area of the website, the new positions page. TRR is bouncing right off the 50-day moving average on a big volume surge with BOP racing up to max green. It's in the BOP for, BOP, green BOP for 20 days scam, can slim stock scam, and it was also confirmed in the price volume BOP surge scam. So pretty strong move overall. 2.5% position once again for TRR because it is above $10. If it was below $10, it would still be 2.5%, but it would be quote, quote, speculative, and I would not be giving it to everybody on the gold section of the site where the new positions are. So TRR, NGHC, a little bit more uh, riskier, not the highest of high, high quality, but beautiful patterns. They look better than MNST. So it is what it is. 2.5 NGHC, TRR, 5% MNST. And we're going to add to VRX. VRX is a cancel quality stock and a perfect speculator stock. It was also confirmed in the high price stock scam. 2%, 1% for being cancel, 1% for being perfect speculator. And then ABCW, another ad signal, pocket pivot point signal, breaking out with max screen bop holding. ABCW was confirmed in the max screen bop for five days scam. And also, I believe in the 52, yep, the new 52 week highs and at least average volume scam. But this one, 1%, 0.5% for one scan, and then 0.25% for each additional scan for 1%. And then finally, you guys recognize this one, HLTH, another long signal, pocket pivot point signal on even higher volume with Max Green BOP holding. This stock was confirmed in my price volume BOP surge scan. It was found in the Max Green BOP for five days scan. It's a future can slim quality stock, just not one yet.